G'day guys, welcome back to another video with Eno from Fantasy Take TV. Yeah, I hit the wild card. I did it. I tweeted about half an hour before the deadline. I said, someone try and stop me from hitting the wild card. And to be honest, I think most of the replies said do it. But um, basically, I just got sick of looking at my team with Danny Ward in goal. Uh, Tommy Asu, who I just, just didn't believe he would actually get a start and I should have really waited until it happened to, to go for him and fair play to Ben White he's actually been playing pretty well at right back um, covering off so look I think it will change eventually I'm just not sure when and um, you know I, I probably assumed another one pointer there or something if I went with him it wasn't a good week to field Andreas um, so I just didn't like the way it was looking um, I was not worried but thought that Harlan would would definitely get a rest against Forrest midweek and, and we're yet to see that and who knows if he will or, or won't um so I thought I'd, I'd wild card just get rid of the keeper situation um fix fix one of my mids as well and and I think five at the back whilst I still have a fifth defender on the bench I just wanted to sort of restructure the squad and and make it a bit deeper for the uh you know midweek games coming up um European football as well for all the big clubs so um any rotation I should have some decent cover but yeah I did it so in, yeah I got Sanchez in goal that I mean that to me he, he looked like the best option um I was going to start him to start the season I just needed 0.5 and, and um, took it from him which um yeah he, he's been awesome um I think yeah Brighton have only conceded one goal so far Trent you have to keep Trent I, I, I do not know how people were trading this man out um if there's one asset you must own in this game it is Trent Alexander Arnold because yeah we, well we did it in one game he scored an absolute banger got an assist could have got more points I mean we'll talk about that game in, in a second um Cancelo again I think I think judging by off the data right now he's playing a slightly different role as he has to last season he's not as attacking um, you know, getting in the box, getting forward. He's more playing as a midfielder, which is still okay. Um, and he's the most nailed City defender um, with, you know, Diaz already getting a rest. Uh, Stones is playing for now while while Laporte's injured, but the fact he's 7 mil, it seems a bit overpriced and Kyle Walker probably is a lot more value and is a lot more value, but um, maybe we won't even... I mean, Cancelo has got an attacking return already, but I think it was a little bit of a fortunate one um, to an extent, but yeah, he, he there's a watch on him. I mean, Forrest this week, he ain't going anywhere. But there's just a watch on him. Maybe um, if I need cash in the future, it would come from him. We'll wait and see. Reese James, I think, is a must-own, so he stayed in there. And Perisic, I, I um, was confident he'd start against Forrest. I, I knew there was points there and not someone I wanted to watch that game without. Um, and unluckily for, for me and for Perisic owners, he, he um, was getting assist until, until Harry missed the penalty, which we'll also talk about uh De Bruyne, um, someone I'll, I will be captaining this week against Forrest. I thought he'd be the best captaincy option then, just with um, you know uncertainty around Haaland and his minutes. Foden, I just if you know me by now, I just can't find a way to get rid of Foden out of my team. Um, old Phil, but but maybe there is um, a, a reason I do in in the near future, and we'll talk about that. Martinelli, uh, most valuable mid in the game. Um, you know, he's, he's way under price. And, and then Pascal Gross, uh, absolute, um, saved me this week, really, um, with the captaincy not going well and, and no Haaland um, in my team. Gross really did um, some good work for me getting a goal there and in the 1-0 victory. Could have had more returns as well. He had a couple of assists um, or good passes that, that could have been assists. Harry Kane, yeah, so... The early goal was all looking good. And then, to be honest, Forrest were actually uh, dominating the ball um, for the most part of the rest of the first half. Uh, but then second half, Spurs started to get going a little bit, creating more chances. Um, and then uh, we would have had a goal, really. Uh, Perisic crossed it into him, um, was going to head it at the back post and, and was going to win that header. But uh, old uh, Cook from, from Forrest stuck his hand up, got a yellow, which probably, I guess, was the right call. But in the end, um, yeah, gave away the penalty and, and Dino Henderson saved that one um, from Kane, which I think is his first missed penalty in four years. So uh, I think on that, st I mean, he would have, yeah, he pretty much, pretty much matched Haaland, assuming, I mean, you can't always assume that that happens and he goes and scores a third, but um, got a yellow card for his celebration, obviously loose points for missing the penalty. So, um Obviously, I wish I captained him. I, I ended up going with Jesus, who um, had a couple of chances, but not as not as many as he's had in previous weeks. Um, but I think he's still a good op captaincy option uh, next week against Villa or next game week. 
Um, and then I've still got Ward on the bench. Maybe I probably should have gone with Everson, but I was, wasn't was really thinking too much. Um, but I still do have to look at that name in my team. Uh, Saliba, so Saliba's my 12th, which is good. I mean, he, he outscored a, lot, a few of my players this week, but um, he was just the one I decided to bench. Uh, I thought Fulham would score, which they did, but he got a lucky assist at the end. And then Andreas is still great cover, the best enabler in the game. And then uh, 4.5 forward, I just threw in anyone I didn't really even think. I think Stansfield would probably be the best one if you're wildcarding because he's getting some minutes. But again, if, you rec- if you're relying on your 15th player in your team, then then you're probably struggling. Um, and then I've got point one in the bank, so I could have had point two if I did Everson, but uh, is what it is. Now, a few of the games we'll talk about. Um, so I scored 70, as you can see, and I moved up to, to two and a half mil from, I think, 3.4. So it's a good, still a good week. Can't complain. You've scored 70 points. You should be moving up from the rank I was at, and it, it could have been more if I... Obviously kept Harland and, um, you know, went with uh, Luis Diaz over, you know, I don't have any Liverpool attackers and they just won one, uh, one 9-0. So crazy game, crazy game. I guess um, we'll go across to it now. I'm not going to uh, quickly go over here. I'm not going to go through absolutely every game just because um, oh, there's just too many. And I'll, I'll just quickly look at the overall stats. I think, you know, four weeks is enough to sort of have a look at the overall stats and how players are performing, but I guess we should quickly look at the Liverpool game and just look. I mean, they, they actually really did overperform, of course, but their finishing was insane. And the, <laughs> I know it's weird to say, but the keeper that gets beaten 9-0, Travers actually did absolutely all he could, really, with a few of those goals. Just terrible defending by the by the boys in front of him, and um, he just got unlucky. He actually kept quite well, I thought. Well, watching you know most of the goals go in, I didn't think there was much more he could do. Firmino, as we saw, two goals, three assists, just uh, ridiculous. Um, I think it looked a couple of those assists were very fortunate. But it does, it does make me wonder, and it was what I was thinking with Salah, because, you know, of course, I... I uh, wild carded Salah out of my team. Um, that Nunez, when he's back and, and when he was playing in the first couple of weeks, was actually getting a lot of opportunities, and, and Salah wasn't uh, a lot more than Salah anyway. And Salah was playing a lot more wide, um, but he was just getting very not fortunate goals. But you know, you know what Salah does? He gets one chance, he takes it. But wow, that wasn't the case in this game. He had a couple of absolutely huge chances, 1.74 xg, and he just somehow missed them both um, I think that's really only from two chances I mean he had four shots but I think basically two shots take up the whole of that of all, all of that stat so incredibly fortunate um, myself to not be punished by that I know a lot of you captained him and, and would have been just scratching it it's the craziest thing we've ever seen really I mean I know last year Havertz getting zero attacking returns in a 7-0 against Norwich and pretty much every outfield player getting one besides him um, but Salah like it's most Salah it's not Kai Havertz it's most Salah the, the Pretty much the goat of FPL, um, scored 200 plus points every season he's been in the Premier League, and and the fact he has two massive chances, plays 90 minutes in this game as well. You could tell he was desperate just to get something, and he just just couldn't get it done, which was just amazing to see. But I still think he's a perfectly fine option going forward. Still probably probably the best, second best premium, I'd say, um, premium price player behind Haaland, which is funny in me saying that because because I don't own either. But yeah, just an incredible game. But always be sure to check under stat if you want to see any of these rest of these stats. But I'm just going to go and look at the just the season stats really now. So that's the table. My gunners up at the top still. Liverpool jumped up the XGs to the top now. It's just pretty much level with City, Arsenal third, Tottenham fourth, and then Brighton. Are, I think are the big um, the big team that have played really really well to this point in time, and and that's the re- reasoning I got Sanchez. I mean they've only let one goal in. Reasoning I got uh, Gross. I think he's been. I mean he's way underpriced for what he's um, doing right now and the, and the position he's playing. So Brighton have really impressed me, and and they really have a good fixture run coming up. So. Um, I'm totally fine doubling under the defence if you want to with a dunk and a Sanchez, and I'm totally. I think I think Gross is is the clear option to get as far as an attacking perspective, and those three together ain't really going to cost you much. So, um, look, tripling up on Brighton feels weird, but if you want to go away from the absolute template that it is right now, that uh, I think I looked before, nine players uh, are ninety plus percent owned, owned in like the top, you know, uh, elite managers. It's just you know, it's two qu- you know, two thirds of your of your side is just. Um, set and forget template and easy picks from the top six or top four even teams so it's look it's a weird start of the season the fixtures obviously dictated that but but the pricing did as well I think a lot of players were underpriced to begin with like I think Jesus should have been eight and a half nine Trent should have been eight would have at least made you have to make some sacrifices elsewhere in your team 
but um, yeah, not to be. So they're the top attacks. Right down the bottom, you see Bournemouth. <laughs> they just offer nothing. Uh, I think it's a free clean sheet when you play them. And then as far as conceded, again, Bournemouth at the bottom. So they're, they're clearly looking like the, the fixture, uh, the team to attack this year. You know, last year it was Norwich um, and Watford to an extent. But right now it's it's Bournemouth and Forest as well. So um, they're the two teams to attack as far as, you know, for, for your captains, for your attacking options. And then we'll go to the players. Um, Harlan's just ridiculous off the charts right now, uh, clearing away the top player. Um you know, every chance of his seems just like a big one, you know, averaging 1.47 per 90, which is crazy. Metro's been unbelievable. Looked very, pretty fortunate goal, but he did the work to get it himself, you know, to, to create it. So he's been good. And I'm liking now what I'm seeing from, from Kane, the fact that he's up here in third, um, ahead of Salah, um, ahead of a few of the others. Um, but look, you see down here, Darwin Nunes he's only played two games, of course, but he, he's, he's um, per 90 stats are quite high here. So... Per 90, I mean, these are quite um, skewed because of the, the games played, minutes played. But, yeah, if we look on the season, he's got Kane, Salah, Zaha injured at the moment. But uh, Jesus just down here as well. So they're the top players at the moment, XA, De Bruyne and Gross. So Gross has actually been quite involved assist-wise as well. He could have had assist or two in the weekend, I think, as I said previously. But, um, yeah, just just check out this website. Phil's there as well for assists, which is nice. Um, but his goal threat isn't really um, where where I would want it. And then Reese James, that's crazy. Fourth fourth amongst players for assists, so um, he's definitely the second best defender behind behind Trent. I think he should be playing right wing back from now with um, Koulibaly being back from uh, his red card, and then and then they just got Fofana, who should be ready uh, pretty soon. So should be uh, Reese out wide um, and and right centre back no more. Quickly, I'll just show you what my team looks like um, for the coming weeks and what I'm thinking with what uh, of how I've set it up. So, Saliba, I mean, Saliba and, and I guess to an extent Perisic and Gross is sort of the, the decision I'll have to make every week as far as um, who, who to bench. Um, look, Villa, I think, is a really nice matchup for a clean sheet. But if I get word that Perisic is starting, I think I'd go with him. Um, just more upside, and then Gross, uh, you got to field him against um, Fulham away, their, their bottom three or four for XGC, and then and then the rest of the team sort of just can't be touched. So uh, captaincy is a choice that I think I'll stick on De Bruyne um, and probably VC uh, Jesus. So rolling this week, which is nice. Next week I'll have two free transfers. Uh, Saliba will sit on the bench again. So look, he's really just my backup right now. If you know Perisic, uh, cop, you know, or if anyone cops an injury, but I think for for most part, it was the fact that I was getting Perisic in. I didn't know that I wanted someone on the bench that's a decent option. Um, and I, I do find it hard to really bench anyone here as well. Look, you play Martinelli and Jesus against United. Yes, it is away. Um, it's a great matchup for for City, for Liverpool, for. For Spurs as well, Fulham at home. So, I mean, Leicester at home even as well for the Brighton boys. Leicester really haven't created anything at all either this season. So, look, I'll have a transfer that week, a free one. I'll I'll think about it. I'll maybe, like like a lot of people are saying, maybe, maybe uh, you, you use it on the one of your bench players. But it's just, just really silly that um, we can do this and not have to worry about it. And then again, game week seven. I mean, t- tell me where I'm using a transfer here. I guess City and Spurs have each other. Maybe you use one there. Um, and then game week eight, it's sort of when people are looking to use the wild card that obviously I've already used, you know, Chelsea, Liverpool. Um, and then I think the week after, Arsenal have uh, Tottenham and um, City United. So the big clubs start playing each other around then. But, you know, for the most part, the next two or three weeks, I don't really have to touch anything. So... Um, yeah, it will be interesting, I guess, in three or four weeks' time, what we start doing with the wild card, whether you guys start playing it, um, whether you transfer players out and then wild card them back in or, or wild card them out and then try to you know get them back in afterwards. Um, we'll have to see. But, um, yeah, let me know how you guys went for the week. Um, look, I'd like to be around. Look, I'll I'll take like a 1 million rank in, in another month's time. If I can get to that... In a month's time, I'll be happy. Um, hasn't been the best start in the world. I think by this time last year, I was already in the top hundred, had hundred thousand, so um, had a pretty decent start, and then and then just pushed on from there. Um, but this year's a lot different, a lot more managers, and just the games are becoming so much more popular. And, and the way it started, especially with the fixtures and the pricing, just just made everyone's team just just so similar. Um, and 
look, I, I don't like playing too much to the template. I know you've got to respect it to a, to an extent, and and clearly, I mean, look at look at all the bloody fixtures for the top teams. So you can't um, stray away from it too much. But but I like having the two Brighton guys. I like having um, some Spurs cover. Right now, the big glaring miss is, is Liverpool attacking my team. So if they you know they've got their form back, got their mojo back, and I'm without that, that that's going to be worrying. To an extent, but uh, with Phil, I, I possibly could look at after Vill- you know Forest and Villa, look at uh, at this Tottenham game um, going to to Luis Diaz, who has looked quite good um, so far. Has been the clear sort of value option in the Liverpool attack, uh, and then they have Wolves at home there, um, and then Chelsea away the next week. But um, look, that's something that I'll probably look at then. Just just play it by year. Whether I want to try and get Harlan back in as well at some point, I'll probably look at too. So just have to play it week by week. Um, but for the for the most part, I think my team will be pretty much unchanged for the next uh, next two weeks. So thanks for watching, guys. Let me know how you went, uh, and I'll be back with the team selection for game week five in a couple of days. Thanks, guys. Cheers. <laughs>